powerful grips resist even the fiercest struggle, while the molded latex muzzle is guaranteed three years against teeth bites. Holy Gideon! If I ain't seen enough dirt here to run you in and throw the whole goddamn book at you, my name ain't Maxton S. Pluck, County Sheriff. Now, oh, uh, Sheriff, let's not be so hasty, hmm? I'm sure that we can work out some little arrangement, hmm? Max, this is so unlike you. Oh, oh, oh. There now follows a special broadcast by the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Sir Mortimer Chris, NP. Good evening. Tonight, as I speak to you, we face the gravest crisis in our nation's history. Tonight, our fairy tale princess is at the mercy of the enemy. She, whose beauty, charm, and vivacious good humor endeared her to millions the world over. She, who with selfless disregard for her own safety, joined our gallant forces to fight for freedom against a foreign foe, has been cruelly and savagely prized from our bosom. The time has come to act. In a situation such as we face today, a Prime Minister has to be resolute. But you can't be resolute without showing you're strong. And you can't show you're strong without blowing people up. General Mosquera has threatened to carry out his execution at 5 a.m. our time on Sunday. I shall now respond with an ultimatum of my own. Unless Her Royal Highness Princess Wendy is returned to us, alive and unharmed by that time, I will have no choice but to authorize the use of nuclear weapons on the capital city of Maguadora. It may sound harsh, but I'm sure you'll understand. There is no alternative. Как вы выглядите здоровым сегодня? Вот именно. Мы бы хотели быть так же здоровыми и жизнерадостными. А вот пришел к вам барышный человек, товарищ. We are in a terrible crisis. The British imperialists are preparing a nuclear strike on our capital. Madam President, there are rumors circulating around Washington this morning that General Mascara has just made a military pact with the Soviets and that Russia would now back Mascara against the UK in any nuclear exchange. <laughs> well, I don't know where you heard that. From the chief of the defense staff. Yes, that is correct, yes. And all because one man, this lacrobat, not only foiled your attempts to avoid war in the first place, but is now preparing to assassinate a British princess in 36 hours' time, which in turn will trigger a major nuclear disaster down in the Caribbean. The whole world is asking the question, why haven't you caught this man? Yes, indeed. And, uh, and I'm glad to be able to answer that question. It, the, basically, because the answer... Uh, 
a single one. Um, let me try it. got it all. This is the Network News, Washington. I'm Dan Hickey. Good evening. Opinion polls in Britain show that the population are overwhelmingly behind their government's threat to launch a nuclear attack on Maguador City unless their favorite royal, Princess Wendy, is returned alive and well by midnight Saturday. Opposition leader Mr. Gerald Wibley did briefly question the Prime Minister on the decision in the House of Commons this afternoon and was immediately denounced as a witch. Detectives acting on Sir Mortimer's instructions then searched Mr. Wibley's house in North London and found a series of broomsticks and a tall pointed hat. President Adams, meanwhile, has dismissed suggestions that the Soviet Union might launch a retaliatory strike since the Russians have no capacity for tactical nuclear exchange in the Caribbean. And now the rest of the news. The body of an American journalist who sailed with the task force to Santa Maya was today found floating in the sea off Louisiana. How he got there and the circumstances of his death remain a mystery. Hey, Come on. hey careful what you're doing. Yet the more I thought about it, the more a strange theory began to form in my mind. There was no doubt about it. This obscure little island was no tourist haven. It was being used as a Soviet nuclear missile base right here on America's doorstep. Sorry to call you down at this hour, madam, but this represents a major escalation of the crisis. A Soviet theater capability in the Caribbean. This could blow the whole thing wide open. Did you contact Marv? He said he'd be right down. Good. Hey, I just heard. I think we'll have to lay this on the line for Chris now. We only had 25 hours. Bill, have them saddle up Air Force One. I'm flying out to London tonight. I would like an early call at 6.30, please. I have to be at the airport. Also, I would like a croissant and cubic tour. And dark or a stick coffee. Just put the luggage in my room, please. Holy shit, what is that thing? Some kind of gorilla you're going to... Get that out of here. Cut it, scum. This beast is a fine and no... Quiet, princess! Let go of me, you fool! No. You've upset her. Listen. Once I have given her her Valium suppository, hmm? she will be no trouble at all, I assure you. Listen, you ain't bringing no monkey into this hotel. I see. And suppose I ask you to reconsider, huh? landing in Heathrow Airport in about 40 minutes from now. I don't know how you can do it. Sorry, sir? I don't know how you can sleep when we're only 24 hours away from a nuclear war. Sorry, sir. Christ almighty, what are we doing? Just obeying orders, sir.
The Soviet ambassador has made it quite clear, Prime Minister, that in no way will his government tolerate the first use of nuclear weapons. The second you release that trident on Magwador City tomorrow morning, they'll let loose with everything they've got. And they have enough firepower on that island to blow your entire fleet to hell and back. And by that time, we'll be into a superpower face-off. So, uh, surely you can see that nobody's life, not even that of a member of the royal family, is worth a global holocaust. Well, I'm uh, sorry you feel about it that way, Barbara. I never took you for a pinker. Obviously, I was mistaken. You see, we in this conservative government have always believed that it's totally immoral to waste billions of pounds on nuclear bombs that are never used. But... Where is the sanity in vaporizing millions of totally innocent people? Well, it shut Japan up, didn't it? It is all a game of bluff, General. Nothing more. And we hold all the cards. It is vital that we stand our ground now. You're right. Nuclear war is unthinkable. Once it has started, no one can win. Now, I know what you're going to say, Barbara. Nuclear war is unthinkable, because once it's started, no one can win. Well, you're wrong. You see, I've already taken all the precautions necessary to protect my people against nuclear attack. Precautions? Yes, um, naturally, I've uh, had to keep this all very, very hush-hush, as you'll uh, understand. I think I can say that British technology has come up with a real winner. How about that? This provides complete protection against thermonuclear explosions up to 20 megatons. And it's very cheap, only costs a pound. We've given the contract to a little firm in Milton Keynes, and they're churning them out by the truckload, even as I speak. So, there you have it. Uh, uh, but surely, it's just an umbrella. No, it's all wrong. We've got people combing Central America for him. Hey, that's not the way he operates. He gets a real kick out of taunting us. We've got to think the way he thinks. Now, if you were Lacrobat and you'd kidnapped a British princess, where would you hide her? So lifelike. You could almost believe it was her. How could anyone want to harm such a darling creature? I hope they burn in hell. Come along, ladies. We close in ten minutes. With just eight hours to go before Britain carries out its threatened nuclear strike on the capital of Magadora, Thousands of panicking citizens are attempting to flee the city. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister took time off today to visit the London Wax Museum, where his new waxworks image was unveiled. Madam, we've just... The Wax Museum? Air Force One is standing by, Madam, to return to Washington. The way the situation is, we've got to get you back to the nuclear shelter. Sir. Wax Museum. 